Hello everyone, my name is Flippy, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to do some basic retexturing in Saints Row 4. Okay, first off, we need a few programs in order to do this. The first group of programs we will be using are Minimal Saints Row 4 tools, so go ahead and download that. Now the second set of programs we will be needing are the Saints Row 3 texture utilities by Scanty. All of this can be found at saintsrowmods.com, so go ahead and download them and extract them to your desktop. Okay, now that we have our programs ready, we're going to first open up the Saints Row 4 Tools folder, and then we're going to open up Extract Pack File GUI. It's going to be this fancy program right here. So once it opens, we're going to move it over here, and then we're going to click on Extract. From here, you need to navigate to your Saints Row 4 game folder, which you can find at this location. And from your Saints Row 4 folder, you need to click on Pack Files, PC, and Cache. And in here, we're going to open up Customize Item. Now, Customize Item is where all the clothing, hair, and accessories are stored. If you're looking to retexture makeup, face paint, or tattoos, you'll want to choose Customize Player. If you want to make your own weapon skins, you'll choose Items.bpp. In this tutorial, I'm just going to customize clothes, but the process is almost exactly the same. And in fact, it's easier to customize tattoos and stuff because it saves you a few extra steps. But let's just customize the clothes first, and once you get the hang of this, the player and weapon customization will be a walk in the park. So for now, let's select Customize Item and then hit Open. And then we're just going to hit OK to extract it to the desktop. Okay, so once that's done, you can close everything, and what we're going to do is open up our newly created folder that this program has made for us. Now, inside of this folder, we are going to have a lot of files. Basically, everything in here is all the items that we can customize in-game. From the hair, to the shoes, to the hats, they're all right here. Now, the first thing you want to do is figure out what is the ID of the item you wish to customize. So, as an example for this tutorial, let's say I want to retexture this old steel T. So, what I'm going to do is go to search and type old, and there it is. Now sometimes it won't be as easy as this and you'll have to put more effort into finding the item that you want. But here is the old still T and you'll notice that we have two files here. One starts with CF and the other with CM. So CM stands for the male version of the texture and CF stands for the female version. So if you're retexturing clothes for a male character, go with CM. If it's for a female character, go with CF. And all we're going to do with this is simply copy the name of the file down. So right click rename and copy the file name. Okay, so now we're going to return to the customize item folder and we're going to go all the way down to a file called customizeitem.asm. And now we need to open this file. You can simply open it in Notepad, but I'll be using Notepad++. And once you have it open, hit Control F and paste the file name that we copied earlier. And here it is, and now what we're looking for is the CustMesh ID that is associated with the file. To find this, we're looking for the first CustMesh ID that appears before the file name we copied. This is important, not the one after, but the one before. Once you've found it, copy the whole thing down. Okay, now close Notepad, and now you want to search for the CustMesh ID in the Customize Item folder. And here it is, and we are now going to copy this to our desktop. Okay, so now with that done, we are going to go back into Minimal Saints Row 4 Tools, and we are going to open up Extract Pack File GUI again. Now we're going to click Extract, and we're going to choose to extract the Cust Mesh file. Now make sure you create a new folder before hitting OK. If you don't extract it into a different folder than the one from the source file, the program will crash. Okay, so once that's done, close everything and open your newly created folder. Now move to the side and open your Texture Utilities folder. 
And from here you want to move the CPEG file and the JPEG file from the Custom Mesh folder over into the Texture Utilities folder. And now what we're going to do from here is click and drag the CPEG file into the SR3 Unpacked Textures file, and that's going to cause two to three more files to appear. It all depends on your texture, but in this case it was three. So what we have here are three direct draw surface files. To open these up, we need to use an image editor. You can either use Photoshop, GIMP, or Paint.net. For this tutorial, I'll be using Paint.net. So here we have paint.net, and the direct draw files we will mainly be working with are the two that end in an underscore P and an underscore D. One is going to be the flat texture of the shirt itself, and the other is going to be the old steel logo. So to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and click and drag the underscore D file into paint.net first. And here is the shirt's texture, and basically what this is, is the 3D shirt flattened out into 2D. Now let's open up the underscore p file and we'll see that it's the old steel logo. And notice the strange colors that are associated with it. Basically, each color is something you can edit in game. For example, the blue is transparent, so whatever color you make this shirt is going to show up there. The cyan part is the secondary color, and the neon pink is the tertiary color. So all of this is just to give you an idea on how things function. Another option is just to make the whole logo black, and that's going to disable the primary color selection on the actual t-shirt, leaving you stuck with the default t-shirt. And from here you can go even more in depth with your design thanks to having some visual aid. See I can draw whatever I want, and I know how it will look in the actual game. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. I'm not trying to confuse you, but this is just an option you may wish to experiment with later on. For now, let's just keep things simple by customizing our own design with the old still texture. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to get the blue color, remember that's the primary color, and I'm going to make a whole new image with that color. Now using the eyedropper tool again, I'm going to go to the original logo and select the pink color. Then we're going to go back to the solid color layer, and from here you can do anything you want. Draw a smiley face, write your name, just do whatever. Now remember, this is the tertiary color. That means anytime I edit the tertiary color in-game, this will change as well. Okay, so now that we're happy with our design, let's go back with the eyedropper tool to get the cyan color. And really, I don't have a good idea for a design here, so I'm just going to draw some squigglies. And that's what I suggest you do as well, since this is probably your first time, just do something simple for a test run. And now that we're done with our design, we are going to flatten the image, and that basically just merges all the layers together. We're going to do this by going to Image, and then Flatten Image. And then we are going to Save. So we are just going to save it by saving over the exact same file. We are now going to be given some options on how we want to save. The only thing you want to change here is the drop down box. Make sure that you use DXT5 compression. Now press OK to save. And now we can close this image. Now we aren't editing this part of the texture in this tutorial, but the process is pretty much the same. Save over the exact same file and use DXT5. OK, so now we have retextured the old still T. Awesome! We now have to put everything we extracted back where it goes. So to start, click and drag the CPEG file into the Repack Textures file. And now you're free to go ahead and delete the DDS files or keep them as backups if you want to. Now drag the CPEG and the JPEG files back to the folder where they were originally extracted. Now go ahead and close both folders and reopen the Saints Row 4 Tools folder. And now we are going to choose to open the Build Pack File GUI program. Now for the source files, we are going to choose the custom mesh folder that has our edited textures. Now for update ASM PC file, we need to move a file that we have already worked with. Remember the customize item.asm file from the customize items folder? That's what we need, so drag that into your Saints Row 4 root folder and then select it.
Now before we press build, copy down the cust mesh ID that we've been working with and then press build. Now the file name we are going to save it as is going to be the exact same as the cust mesh file name. And after you hit save, you are finished. Yes, we have finally done it. Now start up Saints Row and go to the old still T, and there it is. Our custom design is now in the game. And as you can see, because we use the associated blue and pink colors, we can change them in game. And that's really all there is to it, guys. I mean, we can get a lot more advanced with all of this, but really you'll just have to play around with the whole thing yourself to get a feel for how it works. But if you want to do some simple redesigns like this, then it's all really straightforward. So just have fun with it and play around and pretty soon you'll get the hang of it. And hopefully you'll be able to bring your artistic vision to life. Like for the longest time I've wanted a Steve Urkel sweater. And now I have one. And it's amazing. So yeah, I hope this video helps you embark on a wonderful modding adventure. If you have any trouble, let me know in the comments below or check the description where I'll have some additional information posted. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more Saints Row content and I will see you guys next time.